everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sheila Bella. This is the best place to be for beauty entrepreneurs who want to learn how to make money in their salons and online. So today we're going to be talking about how to utilize Instagram to gain new clients. And I'm just talking about likes or followers that don't really want to pay you. I'm talking about paying clients, like real paying clients is a big difference. And that what makes me so confident that I can teach on this topic is because I myself built a seven figure permanent makeup business within three years, all through Instagram. And I'm going to show you how to do the same thing. So if you're excited, like this video and make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified of new videos every week. So. For a lot of beauty business owners, Instagram is a vital tool for gaining new business. It's true. It usually goes something like this. You run into a friend that you haven't seen in a little while and you notice something different about her. You say, oh my gosh, girl, did you get your brows done? They look really good. Your friend proceeds to say, oh my gosh, I'm in love with my brows. I'm so glad you like them. You have to go to my girl. She is the best at doing brows. So what do you do? You ask her, well, does she have an Instagram? And that's usually how it starts. And then you stalk her on Instagram, right? Or maybe a friend shares a before and after photo of her beauty transformation on her page and she tags the artist or the stylist. And then you go check out that artist. The bottom line is clients find us on Instagram. It is the way people choose practitioners nowadays. So you can raise your chances of being chosen from the millions of other beauty accounts on there by following these steps. So stick around because by the end of this video, you're going to understand my five best tips for how to beat the competition on everyone's favorite scroll hole, Instagram. Take notes. Okay. Are you ready? Tip number one, know who you are trying to attract. I can't stress this enough how important it is to identify your ideal client. A lot of times when people graduate from cosmetology school or get a permanent makeup certification, they are so eager to begin that they jump to creating their accounts and just posting whatever, thinking that that's all you need to do. That's all you need to do in order to be successful, right? No. And then after a while they wonder, why they barely have any clients even though they post consistently. Is that you? So what do you get? You're probably resentful and you're confused and you're frustrated, understandably. Well, let's backtrack a little. You skipped a step. Number one, before you do anything at all in terms of marketing your beauty business, you need to think about who do you want to attract? Who are the types of clients that you just can't get enough of? Which clients of yours do you wish you had more of? Think about your favorite girl who comes to see you. Don't you wish you had her as a client every single day? I mean, she hardly complains. She tips well. She's funny too. And when you see her name on your calendar, you're like, ah, oh, it's going to be a great, easy, fun day. Have you ever caught yourself saying, oh, favorite client name? Let's call her like Lucy. <laughs> Oh my gosh, I wish all my clients were like you. Whoever your favorite client is, it's important to understand not just her demographic, age, location, mm, that stuff's shallow. You have to think deeper. You gotta think like a millionaire. What's more important to me than just the demographic of somebody is somebody's psychographic. Take this seriously. What does Lucy, your favorite client, care about? What accounts does she follow on Instagram? Since we're talking about Instagram here. Why does she even follow these accounts anyway? Because how do they make her feel? What are they teaching her? Why does she feel connected to these accounts or these brands? It's important to take all of these things into consideration before just posting anything willy nilly, before choosing a photo even, before posting a random quote, writing your caption, choosing colors for your branding even, because if you just brand your business and post things based on what you like without taking into consideration what your ideal client might want to see, right? Might want from you. Then you run the risk missing out on all of the Lucy's in the world finding you. She'll never know about you because your Instagram doesn't speak to her. 
My advice to you here would be to sit down and think about all of the things your ideal client may be going through. What her fears are and how can your Instagram posts address her needs even before she gets in your chair. If you're feeling you need a little bit of help figuring out who your ideal client is, well, you're in luck because I actually have a free guide that you can download to help you do just that, to identify your ideal client. Just go to SheilaBella.com forward slash ideal client profile. And I'm also gonna go ahead and link it down below for you, okay? Number two, bio. Very important. Instagram bio is a big deal. It's a big deal, okay? Uh, when somebody comes across your profile, the ver very first thing they read is your bio. And if your bio isn't convincing, you know, the reader enough that, hey, this is an account that you should definitely follow and it's speaking to them, then they won't follow you. So your bio needs to be clear, 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 clear. Clarity over cute and poetic. The job of your bio is to attract the people that you want and repel the people that are not for you. What I mean by that is, if your bio looks anything like your bio on Tinder, then you're gonna be attracting the wrong kind of attention, right? So the same goes for when your bio looks like your personal account. If your goal is to monetize your social media, it needs to be professional. And how you do that is to make sure that your bio is all about not you, the customer. And this might ruffle some feathers, but I'm just, I just need to give it to you. No one cares about your hobbies, I'm sorry. Not when they first see you. You're just a profile right now. You're not a person to them yet. Nobody cares about your hobbies. No one cares about your pets. You know, people care about themselves. That's what they care about. So as warm and as fuzzy and it may make you feel to say that you're a dog mom, congratulations, your prospects, your paying prospects won't care. In the first five seconds they come across your Instagram po profile, they just won't. They're thinking about them. They may care after they've gotten to know you and after they've gotten a treatment from you or something, but not, but not right away. People are doing two things at all times. Remember this, avoiding pain or getting closer to pleasure. That's it. So your Instagram bio should be clearly stating what pain you alleviate and what pleasure you can bring to potential customers, period. It's a simple formula that I like to use when I'm coaching my beauty bosses inside Pretty Rich University. Your bio needs to state who you help, how you help them, what qualifies you, and a call to action. Very simple. So here is an example for permanent makeup artists. I help busy moms save time and look their best through permanent brows, lips, and eyeliner. Expert with over 5,000 procedures. Free FaceTime consultation. DM me. Simple. Here's an example for hairstylists. I help savvy millennial women achieve the sexiest hair of their lives to balayage and hair extensions. Celebrity endorse color specialists. Not sure what you want? Let's chat. Email me. Imagine if you saw a bio like those two speaking to one person versus a bio like this. This is a real bio. This is a real bio. I gotta blur everything out. <laughs> okay, I'm not even gonna say her name. Okay, this is what it says. Certified, M-U-A, I'm beauty obsessed, dog mom slash spiritual junkie, living my best life in sunny San Diego. And then her favorite quote, I guess, is no day but today. As cute as that bio is, and sure, I'd probably want to be friends with her, she seems cool, you realize that nowhere on there addresses the customer. It's all about her. And if you're truly serious about monetizing your social media to get more clients in your chair, most of your content should be about them, not you. Next lesson. Next two lessons are actually back to back, okay? Three and four are all about feed posts and stories. Yes, it's important to be consistent on both of these types of posts on Instagram, but for completely different reasons. Remember, your feed is for your cold audience and your stories is to nurture your already warm audience, your current followers, it's to go deep with them. Your feed should be mainly used to attract 
strangers, prospects, new people who have no idea who you are, that they don't care yet, but you'd like them to. And your stories is basically for your followers who are already warm to you, but want to get to know you better. So let me explain why. Three, your feed. Remember that anything you post on your feed could end up in the Explorer page. It's also what people see when they first come across your profile. So whether they find you through the Explorer page or they see somebody tag you and their transformation, perhaps a satisfied client leads them to your page, you have about five seconds to impress that new prospect, meaning most of the things on your feed, the first the nine, nine, yeah, the first nine squares basically on your grid that she's gonna peruse through because she's not gonna go beyond that. It should grab her attention and make her want to read more. Like this is a valuable page. So postings like before and after photos with captions that encourage her to imagine what her own transformation might be like. Educational posts that debunk myths she might have about your field of expertise. Demonstrate with social proof. Post testimonials from other satisfied customers so she knows that you've been vetted and you have great track record. A great track record. Four, stories. Stories are for people who are already warm to you. Stories are great, have fun with them. Stories are where you post things like what you had for breakfast, your day at the beach, your random rants, right? Or thoughts of the day, whatever. Pictures of you with your family, your happy clients for sure. This is the place where you can finally post pictures of your dog. This is a place where you should be nurturing your audience, showing them that, hey, there's more to me than my professional side. I'm a real person just like you. I'm likable, I'm relatable, etc., etc. right? Likeability. And it's also for entertainment. Got it? Good. Last thing, be consistent. Gary V, my man, Gary. Uh, he says, the faster you want it, the more vulnerable you are. And uh, when I read that, I was like, ugh, weak, right? Slain. You have to keep going, girl, even when you feel like nobody is watching because growing a following on social media has kind of a snowball effect. It, has very re it is a very real thing to see very little growth for two years in your business and then all of a sudden on year three, boom, you become a millionaire. That's actually how it happens. That's how it happens. Another thing, have you experienced a time when a client has found your website through a Google search? She books an appointment with you and then days later, mysteriously canceled and wanted her deposit back. Or maybe she told you she was, <coughs> I'm sick. <laughs> Lies. Lies. Nope, that's not what happened. She looked at your social media and she didn't like it. In all my years as a beauty business owner and success coach, I know that most clients who cancel on you won't tell you the truth. And that's unfortunate. We, sh we could learn from them, but they, they lie to us. The bottom line is they change their mind. And I can tell you from personal experience that a lot of clients change their mind after looking you up on Instagram. You have to pass scrutiny. If you rely on just your website to do everything for you, understand that quality clients don't work that way. Good clients will do their homework. And those are the type of clients that will pay more and tip more. And if somehow she finds you through a Google search and books with you because of your beautiful website, you better believe that eventually that client is going to look you up on Instagram so that she can get excited about her appointment. And I see this happen all the time. If a client is not impressed with your Instagram or doesn't see that you're consistent, the last time you posted was like three weeks ago, she's going to feel like you're out of touch. So in a nutshell, it all matters. When it comes to using the gram to grow your clientele, you need a real business strategy. You can't just guess. With that said, I want to invite you to check out my free 30-day social media guide. If you're stuck at home and you're wondering what to post, I've done all the guesswork for you. Hello. Free content ideas for the next 30 days. You can get it by texting the word social guide, no spaces, it's two words, but social guide, social guide, no spaces to my phone number 
4098. That's my honest to God phone number. It comes on my phone. And I'm gonna tell you, text you the link back to get the guide for free. I hope you guys like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next week.